Mm. And eventually I decided to move to Denver uh, because Denver is really, uh, or was at the time when I moved in 2000, I don't remember, 10 or whatever, 13. Um, it was an oasis for, uh, for teachers. Um, CI. For, yeah, for CI teachers. Uh, you know, Susan Gross, so you've heard of Susan Gross, Susie Gross, mm -hmm. you know started there and so that I moved there and never regretted it I've my journey has been you know uh, I'm extremely fortunate that I teach there I train teachers I present you know in the United States as well as in France you know and I've been doing this for what 10 years or mm -hmm. nine years and look back and I can, I'm, I'm just extremely satisfied and happy. So you, you have total freedom to teach the way you want to? I have a hundred percent freedom, uh, Alvaro. It's amazing. So what happened is I started teaching in Denver and um, I inherited the first year, believe it or not. I don't know how it is in Poland in in the schools, but I, I had 44, one of my classes had 44 students, imagine, 44, with desks. Mm. So I, um, it was very hard to do stories because there was no, I mean, I still did them, you know, but there was no movement, you know, we couldn't really, I, I had an actor in front of the class, but it was hard. Anyway, my principal came to observe me the, like, two months into my first year there. And we were doing a story. I don't remember what the story was, but you know, there were some flowers and the, the actor went and brought this flower to the principal, completely spontaneous. There was no, you know, and she totally, she just could not believe this. So I, she was really like, she loved it. She loved the class, she loved, the everything the atmosphere the you know the the whatever was in the room and so I was like oh my god this is great so I went to see her and I and I asked her I said listen you see what I do in my classes we do a lot of stories and I you know there's a lot of movement and these desks they're in the way would you mind if I got rid of my desk and she said absolutely so I got rid of the desks okay. and, you know, and then there's been a movement now people, because I, I, I do, I host a language lab, not just me, a, a, a few teachers in Denver, you, we call them master teacher, whatever, that's kind of silly. But anyway, uh, they come and observe us, uh, teachers from the district, as well as teachers from all over, they come and observe us. So I started this thing in Denver. Now a lot of teachers get rid of their desk you know and uh, so it's great and so when we got rid of the desk my first uh, configuration was like a u you know mm -hmm. so i was there in the front and then the students were in a u the class just chairs okay mm -hmm. and uh, now i've changed it in the last few years couple of years we're all in a circle you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the reason is I, I want to send a message that we, it's a whole, we're all part of the whole and we all contribute to this whole, okay? Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm the teacher, I have the language, but you all as important as me, we're all, you know, in this together and it's really been great. It's really been great. The kids have kind of, they're amazing. They're amazing. They're just like, they buy into it. They love yeah, it. Right. They love my class. They feel validated. They feel cared yeah. for. They feel human. You mm -hmm. know, with, with high schools, kids don't feel human. They feel like robots. Correct. <laughs> and in my class, they feel like human and they've told me so. And I think that you cannot teach until you get the buy-in. You know, you get the, 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 the students feel loved, they feel secure, 
they, yeah. feel tr they trust you. You know, nothing can happen before you get that. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just you're creating stories, you're having fun, you're, you're probably talking about topics that they're interested in. So yeah. no wonder they're they buying to the idea and and getting back to your principle, you know, it just she saw that they were having fun. She she probably saw that they were they could actually understand everything you were talking about. And it just yeah. It, like you said that that what you said is important like make them feel human right yeah like make them feel appreciated not just robots listening to someone talk nonsense for an hour <laughs> just exactly. <kidding. laughs> exactly you know a lot of uh, a lot of even today you know a lot of uh, language teachers they still have that mentality of giving a lecture you mm. know I have, I'm the vessel, I have the language. And yes, of course, I have the language. But uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot communicate. And, and you know, language, language, what is language for but communication, right? There's unless you want to become a linguist and see how language, you know, works and how it's it's put together mm -hmm. unless you want to and i tell my kids that you know i always explain um you know language is used for communication and communication is not always words right yeah. actually a lot of communication is non-verbal so that's why if you engage the student in a communicative event they they will respond maybe with a smile you know maybe with a thumbs up or maybe they will answer in their own language and that's okay because that right. means they understood what you were saying right. and you know we have to, to we have to model we have to model good communication and of course i teach my kids that interpersonal communication which is a lot of what i do in my class you know interpersonal meaning between people between person um has to do with being able to watch someone in the eyes that's why you know in ci we say you know we have to teach to the eyes and it's very true that you the eyes are so important and i teach my kids that we do a lot of games in my class when i say games we have a lot of brain breaks you know mm -hmm. and uh some of the brain breaks involve teaching how to become a better communicator you know how to look at yourself in the eyes and it's very very hard for for teenagers high schoolers it's extremely hard yeah <laughs> they're insecure and yeah, yeah they're so insecure they're so worried about the uh, you know other kids looking mm -hmm. at them and it's it's a very interesting age you know and yeah. uh but yes yeah, so i i you know i want to teach them that language is only meant for communication and i have to I have to lead the way I have to really lead by example, if you will. Right. So, yeah.